welcome. At, this is only my second time going live. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but welcome to Doc Gen Fit. Happy to be here. Now, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, wherever that may be. I don't even know where that is because you know that today I'm going to teach you some really quick, easy cues that you could use to modify different exercises so that you don't feel pain. And it doesn't have to take very long. <laughs> it doesn't have to be very complicated. So we're gonna run through some quick exercises. I'll go through what those six will be pretty soon. But you know that I have a ton of other information and I'm gonna drop links below actually to other videos that I've done in the past that also show corrections, correct form, so that you could keep moving and not feel pain. So if you haven't yet, please, please subscribe. Now, some of the exercises that we are going to be going over include side lunges, lunges, so both front and back, because a lot of people complain of knee pain. We're going to go over a hip thrust. So I have my bench that we use, our dining bench, um, especially when I'm in home and I just want to show some quick exercises. I use this dining bench all the time. Um, we're going to go over some squats, but particularly the goblet squat because I've actually gone through front squats and back squats, which are best if you have knee pain or low back pain with my husband in a prior video. And that link, that is linked below as well. We're gonna go through push-ups because a lot of people complain of either back, shoulder, or wrist pain during push-ups, and the overhead press. Now, again, keep in mind, I've gone over other videos like the shoulder press, bent over row, where a lot of people get back pain, deadlifts, squat variations, bridges, and those are all linked below. So if you have pain with any of those exercises or they hold you back and feel achiness, please check those links because I've gone over how to correctly do them so that you stay out of pain. Now, keep in mind, if you do want to continue to move with me and really see how I instruct through a full video, this is what I'm going to be doing in the full body low impact plan. And we are starting it on Monday, August 1st. So starting Monday, August 1st, First, with my Gen Health community. So you got to get into the Gen Health community. Um, I'm going to link that below. It is a monthly subscription, but it is only $25 for the first month. You could do all 30 days. There's 35 different videos. 20 of them will be based on mobility. And then seven of them are based on different strength workouts that I do the entire strength workout with you. So if you want to get into that challenge, we're giving away prizes. I'm showing up on a weekly live to go over the body and really break down anatomy diagnoses so that you can understand what's happening. If you want to get into that, I'm going to link it below. It's just gen.health slash low impact. If you miss the challenge in August and you're watching this later, you can always get into Gen Health. You can always get into the full body low impact plan and start at any time. We are always here for you. Okay, let's get into the first one. So the first one is a side lunge. Now, I love instructing a side lunge because what I see a lot of times happen is when people come into the side lunge, you're either too far up in your chest and you put a lot of pressure in my knee. So a side lunge traditionally should be working your hip here. But if I lunge out to the side and I'm just keeping my back up or my heel is going to be popping off the ground, you can see I'm putting all the pressure in my quad and in my knee. This eventually can cause some irritation. Maybe you're even getting your knee to drop in the inside and it's putting just a lot of tension on your knee and your quad rather than your hip. So the other mistake that I see people make is they come into the lunge and they completely bend over because we've been told, do not let your knee pass your toe, right? And so we bend down and what ends up happening, if I need to get up, I have to get my back up. And so what we end up doing is working our back more. So you can see how my back is then working more than my hip. Now, if I really want to get into that glute, into that hip, one quick tip, and this is so easy. All you're going to do is take your hand on your hip as you side lunge. You're going to step out to the side. And as you're going to squat, you're going to pull this hip back and reach the opposite arm forward. Now, as I'm doing that, you will feel like you're twisting in your body, but what you're actually doing is you're aligning your body. Your nose is now over your knee, your hip, your knee, and your toe. So I automatically come into 
this incredible aligned position. And now I can put way more tension and get a lot lower into my glute. You see how now I'm working my glute rather than just my knee or my back. And it keeps my back straight. It keeps my, my chest up. And it is the easiest cue that I give people to help to stay out of knee or low back pain for side lunge. If you like that one, comment below, try it out. I have so many people who try it out right away and they're like, mind blown. I can't believe that works so easily. So let me know how you feel with that one. So next one I want to go over is the lunge. This one, a lot of people complain of, right? Because you go into a lunge and again, if my chest is too far up, I'm gonna put a lot of tension into my front knee here, okay? And then all the pressure is gonna go here into my knee rather than my hip where I want it. So one, you don't wanna take a huge step out, okay? Not necessary. But to initially modify, especially if you're having knee pain, step back, okay? Instead of a front lunge, do a reverse lunge. So, and say you have weight, I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did with my side lunge, where I pulled my hip back. So, first let me show without weight, so you can see what I mean. So, in the reverse, in the side lunge, I pulled that hip back, right? Well, when I'm gonna reverse my lunge, say I'm gonna start on my right leg, I'm gonna pull this hip back into that side lunge, because as I pull this hip back and reach, I'm gonna increase the space that I can get into this back loop. Now, as I lunge, my hip should be directly over my knee in the back. I barely touch my knee and I come up. You should touch your knee, but it's just a tap, okay? So, grabbing the weight. Now, if you wanna get into that same idea, I'm gonna surround my leg, pull this hip back, so I'm gonna rotate the weight this way, rotate my other weight in front, step back, come into that lunge, and come up. Step back, rotate, pull that hip back. Here. You do 10 of these, back, rotating that chest just slightly. I'm telling you, if you don't feel your glutes fire up, <laughs> we might have to start a little bit <laughs> more with muscle activations, which we do in the full body low impact plan so that you can start to fire up those glutes so that the quads don't always take over. But that is such a quick cue that you can use to rotate that body, pull that hip back, and increase the flexion that you have within that hip so you can maximize the glute. If you want to do front lunges, same idea, okay? If I'm gonna do a front lunge, as I come in, I'm gonna pull that hip back, and then I'm gonna come out. Now, you have to know you're going to increase your quad usage when you're going into that front lunge, because as I come down, as I push back, this is a lot of quad extension, okay? For the reverse lunge, as I come down and I push out, this is a lot of hip extension. So that's the difference. A reverse lunge is gonna get a little bit more into your glutes. A front lunge is gonna get a little bit more into your quads. But to maximize that pressure in the knee, all you need to do is a very similar setup. We're gonna rotate that body and then push up. Rotate that body and then push up from the front. What that looks like, rotating that body, pressing up rotating that body. And what that also does as I get into that natural rotation is I align everything. I pull my hip back. It's perfectly in line with my knee and my toe. And then I come up. So it's a great way to make sure we're not wobbling in that knee side to side and we're not putting any extra tension or torque on that knee. Whew. Anyone else getting exhausted from doing exercise and talking at the same time? Okay. Going right into the next one. So again, these are just easy, quick cues that you can already start to make to make massive changes in how you feel during movement. The next one is a hip thrust. So in the hip thrust, this is a little high. <laughs> so ideally, you wouldn't be starting on a bench this high. Ideally, I want to start on a bench 
that's about a couple inches lower than this. Okay, but this is what I have to work with right now. I want the bottom of my shoulder blades to be on the surface. So not the tip tops of my shoulders. As you can see, I push it back and if I do that. So it's the bottom of my shoulder blades that are gonna be resting on top here. And then I wanna make sure that my feet are not too far out and they're not too far underneath me, okay? I want them to be directly, my feet directly underneath my knees and I'm gonna drop my rib cage to meet my pelvis. So I should be able to look down and see a flat belly here, okay? I have a little bit of a human growing in me, so <laughs> there's a little bit of some pooch there. Now, as I come down, that rib cage is gonna come down with me. So I'm not gonna drop and arch in my back. A lot, what a lot of people do is they arch, they leave their rib cage extended out, and then they try to lift up from here. But what ends up happening if you arch and you come up, a lot of times you stay in that arch and then you're putting all the pressure into your low back and into your quads, okay? So we don't wanna just open up from that back and the quads. Instead, you wanna hook that rib cage down, look and make sure that you can go flatter. And then think about this tailbone tucking under. So if I pinch my hip bones toward my rib cage and then I lock it in here and I pinch it the entire time, tucking that tailbone under and looking forward, automatically I'm gonna put so much more tension into my glutes. So try that next time, locking that rib cage down toward that pelvis, tucking that tailbone under and tell me you don't feel your glutes when you're doing hip thrust that way. Okay, next one, we're gonna quickly go over goblet squats. And the reason I like goblet squats is because it's already gonna move you into a good position to align that rib cage over the pelvis and get you to squat without sticking out the back and without putting too much pressure through those quads. Now, goblet squats are a little bit more anteriorly focused meaning that your core is going to be working, your quads are going to be working. But if we set it up correctly, we can still get some glute action. Now, again, check the link below because Don and I, my husband, we did a podcast on different squat variations that you can use, whether it was front squat, back squat, or goblet squat, depending if you are prone to knee pain, back pain, what, what squat would be best for you and how you could set it up best. So click that link below, we have it on YouTube so that you could check out our form and everything like that. Now, huh, lots of talking for that goblet squat. I'm gonna hold the weight out in front of me and to make sure that you're not putting too much tension on your shoulders or upper back, I wanna lock those elbows down. So I'm almost pinching right underneath my armpits and pulling those elbows down and in. To make this a little bit easier to get lower into the squat, I want you to push the weight out in front of you. So if I push the weight out in front of me, now I have a little bit more range to get lower into my squat, especially if you hold a little bit heavier of a weight here, okay? So I also have a video on squat stands. I did not link that up but it is on this YouTube channel. So you can find the video on what your squat stand should be because a lot of people say toes forward or toes out and you get really confused, right? You have an, your own unique body, I will say that. So find that video. I'm gonna lock those elbows down, pull those, that, that weight away from you because what that's gonna do is gonna help to align my rib cage over my pelvis. So see the change here? Rather than being here and sticking my bottom out to initiate the squat, what I wanna do is pull the weight out and tuck the tailbone under. This is where I'm starting for the goblet squat. Now, rib cage is down, my hips are under, and now my knees are gonna lead the way out and my tailbone drops straight to the ground. I get way more range, I get way more stretch into my glutes, and then I can Descend a little bit lower and lift. Now, obviously, if you want to get lower in your squat, you must do some hip mobility to open up what's happening around those hips. So again, 
check the rest of my channel. I have so much on hip mobility to really help to open up those hips and maximize how low you can go in that squat. Okay, two more exercises and then we're done. Push-ups. The number one thing that I see going wrong with push-ups is that people are trying to do them when you're not ready for them, okay, on the floor. So what I mean here, let me move my weights out of the way, is that what I typically see is push-ups are happening, bottom is getting left behind, elbows are flaring out to the side, and you're coming to chest to the ground, elbows way out. Now tell me, does this look functional? I actually have to force my elbows up and out around my face. That's not what we want to do for push-ups. We want to actually have, if I have my hands just out in front of me, if I bend my elbows, what happens naturally, okay? I don't squeeze my sides. I don't pull my elbows out. What happens if I have my hands out and I naturally just bend my elbows, they come at this diagonal. And my thumbs naturally come toward my nipple line. This is what you want happening, whether it's a chest press and whether it is a push-up, okay? But this is a little bit harder because you're going to make your shoulder stabilizers work a little bit harder. We want to stay in a nice long plane. So elevate the surface. Do not be afraid to elevate the surface. It's so important for the body. So I'm going to place my hands on a higher surface. I automatically want to tuck that tailbone under. You'll notice a theme happening here in all of these exercises. And then I want to naturally allow my elbows to come at that diagonal and then press right out all the way. So pushing those shoulder blades and that chest away from the bench. Again, nice and slow. My chest comes all the way to the bench and then I press up. When we do this, we stay out of the shoulders so those upper traps are taking over. We're able to relax a little bit more, especially because we're on an elevated surface. And you get that full range without stressing those shoulders, without stressing your upper traps, and without putting tension on your back. Never be afraid to elevate the surface, okay? It doesn't look as cool <laughs> to do push-ups, struggling, and doing them incorrectly, causing pain on the ground. It looks much cooler to do it up on an elevated surface. Bonus and tip here, if you are pregnant like me and you are maybe later in the stages in your third trimester, another way that you can modify is just to, to get a little bit of that core activation is just to bend the knees just slightly. So just this bend here, you're gonna feel so much happening in the core. You come down and you press up. So it's gonna help to stabilize that trunk just a little bit more, okay? So those are for my mamas that might have a big belly that is impeding that tension of keeping the legs straight. Okay, last one here. Now I have done a video on shoulder press, so go see that one. And Dom, no, I don't think we did a video on overhead press, right? We did? No, I don't think we did. So <laughs> we haven't done that one yet. But for this one, for overhead press, what mostly happens, and I'll do it on my knees just so that you see the whole body, what mostly happens is that people are flaring their elbows out and pressing into that low back. So again, you're gonna see that common theme where I want you to tuck that tailbone under and to align that rib cage. What that looks like when you're standing is to have a slight bend in the knees, tuck that tailbone under. Now, if I move from here, I don't move from my upper back anymore at all, right? Or my low back. So I'm not here trying to push the weight up. I bend my knees, unlock my tailbone, drop, drop it down toward the floor, and now I just put the weight into my shoulders. But here's the thing. We don't want to be forcing those elbows out to the side. We actually, similar to your um, push-up, we wanna relax. If we relax that chest and drop that tailbone under, the elbows naturally come in front, just a tad more. So rather than this, they come to here. And now from this position, I can press up and feel a lot more in my shoulders, 
rather than my back or rather than pinching and pressing in my back. If that is still really hard for you, one last modification that I'm gonna have you make is come into a half kneeling position, okay? And you're going to, similar to our lunge, you're gonna pull this hip back, you're gonna drive this elbow forward and press up from here, okay? So I'm gonna pull this hip back, drive and lower, drive and lower, press and lower. And you should feel that shoulder whoo, firing up there without any tension into that back or anywhere else. Okay, I'm not sure, I haven't seen comments come through, but please, please comment below. Let me know what exercise cue kind of surprised you, what you're definitely going to be adding in. And if there are exercises that I haven't done before, so videos that I haven't shown, or I haven't gone over an exercise today, comment below and let me know which one that you really want me to go through. <sighs> I think I got my workout for the day <laughs> just from trying to talk and do that at the same time. Now, again, I hope that you learned a lot through this YouTube video. Just really quick cues. If you want to move with me and actually see what it could be like to do a full workout together, full mobility, corrective exercises, core foundations, talking about that pelvic floor and the diaphragm, how this all works together in our trunk, and six, seven strength workouts together, please join the full body low impact plan. The link is below, it's just gen.health slash low impact. You have an opportunity to win prizes, move with an incredible community. And we start Monday, we start August 1st, and it's kind of my accountability as I'm pregnant and want to keep moving myself. So I hope that you'll join us in that challenge if you miss it, you can always sign up on Gen Health and get into the Full Body Low Impact Plan or any of the other 10 plans that we have available specifically for low back, neck, knee, shoulder, anything else. So please check that out. We'll link it below. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment. Let me know. Subscribe so you don't miss out on these videos in the future and continue to get help within your body. See you later. Bye.